Okay, this is Brent from TradeGuild.blogspot.com, back with part two of our um, video series for today covering the market on June 7th. And we were looking at the spiders, we were looking at uh, the two levels of support that uh, just sliced through like a knife through hot butter today, and we have this next level coming up. Um, I mention uh, quite frequently that gaps provide very good support, and we have a gap right here. We have another um, gap in here, and we have another gap in here. And quite often, um, they will also co coincide with previous um, support and resistance. So we're looking for uh, something maybe right in, in the 148 level. Here's um, 18, uh, TSV 18, and you can see um, the divergence over here at this top. And, um, you know, volume falling off right into this top, and these a uh, spinning top or evening star up there. So uh, quite a few um, indications that something was going on here. I'm going to show you again um, 3C on uh, the spiders and it's going to be a five minute chart and here we go. So again I just showed you what looked like a positive divergence in the cues and again in the spiders we have the same thing. Um, a lot of volume here towards uh, the beginning of the day and towards the end of the day. Uh, this is more than likely a lot of uh, limit orders that have congregated overnight. And um, it looks, again, like we have this positive divergence. Again, we got a little bit of a move off this positive divergence. And this one's not quite in a leading divergence like the other one was, but it is in a leading divergence for this whole section as price has made a new low over here. This is actually quite a bit higher even than uh, the earlier readings. So I think uh, there's a really good chance that we're going to see uh, at least a little bounce in the morning tomorrow. Let's take a look at the diamonds. And this is the ETF DIA for the, um, the Dow. And um, basically I just wanted to show you um, support and resistance here. And zoom in a little bit. So we cut through um, one level of support. Uh, we have another level in here that uh, presumably could uh, lend some support. And then we have another level right down here. And I'll give you that reading there. That is, the first one is uh, 132 and then uh, about 130, So we'll see what happens there. Um, let's see if we have any five minute divergence. Yep, there it is again. So you can see, um, we have one, two, this one hasn't turned up yet, but it probably will in the morning. Um, take a look at a one minute chart. Yeah, even on a one minute chart. So, uh, you know, this is another positive divergence as price is hidden down. So I think uh, there's probably a really good chance we're gonna see a, a pop tomorrow. That would be kind of neat. So be prepared to play that if that uh, should arise. So let's take a look at MDY, and this is the ETF for the uh, S&P Midcap Trust. And what did I want to show you here? Okay, what I want to show you here today was uh, the percentages uh, down 2.24, down quite a bit more than the NAS and, and uh, the Dow and, and the S&P. And the reason um, I think these midcaps fared worse today is because of the whole interest rate thing that we were talking about. Um, when interest rates uh, go up, it causes valuation problems. And um, for growth companies, it, it um, increases uh, borrowing costs. So growth companies um, borrow a lot of money, and when those costs go up, uh, for some of the smaller companies, it can be a real uh, detriment. So there's... Uh, MDY, I thought that was a little interesting tidbit of information. And next up, we are going to look at the VIX, which is the CBOE Market Volatility Index. And again, um, this has an inverse relationship with the market. So, um, let's see, I have to show it to you with the NASDAQ, with the Qs. So here's the CBOE VIX in white, the Qs are in blue, and um, like I said, it has an inverse relationship, so presumably when we see these spikes like this, um, we're getting close to 
an oversold level, as we can see uh, has happened in the past over here. Uh, how far can it go? It can go a lot farther than it is now. So, uh, you know, these are just indicators, warning signs. They are not um, a call to action, really. We are going to take a look next at the dollar. And um, let me see if I can get this symbol right. I always mess it up. Okay, so here's the U.S. dollar. Had a pretty decent day today, up a half a percent. Um, and one of the things I wanted to show you on this was uh, 3C. And we're going to take a look at a weekly chart of 3C. And you can see a very, very positive divergence has developed here. Um, here we go. So you see it moving up as price is moving down. And it looks like we've got um, the start of a little move here. So we're going to keep an eye on the dollar. And that has implications for the market. Um, I'm going to take a look at oil real quick. And this is Brent, light sweet crude oil, I'm sorry. And um, it is actually very, very close. Actually, it technically has broken out today. Um, I'm not really comfortable calling this a breakout, but it is pretty interesting. And I think uh, we have some stocks uh, like BPG and a few others that we're into that are in uh, oil. So. We'll keep an eye on that too. That's kind of interesting. Um, related, we have OIH, which is an ETF for uh, oil service. And um, one of the things I wanted to show you on this was ETFs tend to um, produce very good candlestick uh, signals. And I'll show you a really good one right here. This is almost a Harami reversal, and it's almost an evening star re uh, reversal. If it was a Harami, it would have fell within the body of this candle, and the evening star would be um, gapped up. But in any case, it was a really good warning signal, and I think ETFs um, produce better signals. It seems that they're less open to uh, some of the manipulation that we see associated with mark, uh, market makers and specialists. Um, next up is the Dow Jones U.S. Steel Index. And uh, last month I um, warned that I thought this was starting to fall apart a little bit, and I'll show you why. Uh, actually, there's a daily of 3C, a fast 3C, and you can see um, you know, the negative divergence that's built in over here. I'm going to show you a 15 minute chart and it really puts a pretty fine point on it. Um, you know, this indicator, if um, the issue was healthy, the indicator would be moving up with the issue. We can see over here um, it's at a high, it makes a slightly new high with price, but not at all relative to um, the amount that's gone up over here. And over here at the new high, it just starts falling apart and uh, it's really gone downhill from there and actually it's in a leading divergence to the downside now so I think um, steel stocks I think uh, probably have some more downside left in them um, on this daily chart um, it's just it doesn't look good really let's take a look at a weekly chart weekly chart is still in sync so um, if you're into those steel stocks be careful and last one I'm going to show you on this um, video is GLD gold um, this is the gold shares ETF and gold was down 1.73 percent uh, today so um, obviously there's no safe haven in gold at this point um, it's down pretty big so we're going to keep an eye on that and see what develops if um, this market decline continues to move down uh, we may see some some action in gold and we're in RBY long right now so uh, that would be nice to see some action in gold um, I'm going to probably come back with one more video and take a look at some positions and um, positions in my portfolio. Anyway, I'm a little out of it here right now. It's been a long, long day. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thanks for watching TradeGuild.blogspot.com. Check out the website. One more video coming.